I'm here tonight to public comment regarding the travel basketball teams for fourth to eighth grade. Travel coaches were informed that all travel home games this year are going to be held at Turkey Hill Elementary School due to accommodations being made to varsity basketball for practices and for track practices on Sundays. And we're just curious how this is fair to the coaches and children playing for Lunenburg, for the town of Lunenburg. Turkey Hill is quite honestly an embarrassment for ourselves as a town. This gym at Turkey Hill is not even a regulated gym. It is so short that kids um, feel that a half court shot is actually a good possibility. The backboards are from the 1960s and players can either choose to sit on the floor in the corner or on the bleachers with the rest of the crowd. Parents of Lunenburg players are not only paying taxes for the new beautiful $72 million high school that has a beautiful gym, but are now also bearing the 25% increase of fees that were placed this year on the league. Since Turkey Hill may actually qualify as the worst gym in the league, there has been talk among travel coaches to suggest all of our games be away. This is extremely unfortunate. Lunenburg would lose out on a lot of admission money. These kids are the future of varsity sports. They, would be they should be treated with the same consideration as the varsity players. There are 11 to 13 games played in the season. It would be nice to maybe even consider giving them six or seven games in the high school gym. However, if the league decides to play all away games so as to not have the embarrassment of playing at Turkey Hill, I would hope that the fee we are charged to practice and play would be reduced. I'm not exactly sure where to go from here. This seemed to be the right first step in voicing the league's disappointment, but I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, um, chair's report. Um, I just wanted to mention um, some feedback we had on Facebook several weeks ago in regards to our policy discussion that we will be talking about politics in the classroom. And we had some feedback on some of the, the Facebook public pages um, about what it would be about, what we were talking about with um, the policy um, and public comments in the classroom making students uncomfortable. Um, I just wanted to talk to, uh, to the to address the issue of um, publicly commenting on Facebook. If you do have concerns about what we talk about on school committee during school committee meetings, um, all of our email addresses are are on the Lunenburg Schools page. You can reach out to any of us and ask us questions directly. If you have questions regarding the schools, you can reach out to this the administration and ask them directly. Um, to publicly comment on Facebook page doesn't really get you the answers that you desire or the information that you need. So I would appreciate it if you do have questions or concerns, just send myself or a superintendent or any one of us five members um, your questions and we will gladly respond. So we have um, warrants on the table to approve, they're down there. Okay. And minutes for October 4th and 18th. Did you all take a look at the minutes? And the revised minutes. And the revised minutes? Revised, okay. yes. <coughs> Are they all okay now? I think so. Okay. So um, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve our regular session October 4 and 18 minutes with revision. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And so superintendent's report. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, it's, it's such a, a wonderful meeting uh, when we have this meeting in November, when we take the opportunity to recognize the Superintendent's Award uh, recipient for the year. And it was a great pleasure that I introduce Abigail L. DeWire as the recipient of the 2017 Superintendent's Award. Abigail, do you want to join me up here while I 
talk about the wonderful accomplishments <laughs> that you've had at Lunenburg High School. I'm uh, so delighted to have you and your family here, and we'll have you introduce your family in a second. But first, um, I want to um, make everyone aware that uh, you're the daughter of Todd and Jacqueline Dwyer, who are here with us tonight, along with your sister. And we, uh, during your four years here at Lunenburg High School, you have enrolled in a very rigorous course of studies, taking honors and advanced placement uh, courses since uh, your freshman year and even before that as an eighth grader. That's right, in mathematics. So you're a top academic performer and a standout in your overall achievement. You've also been active in the arts as a vocalist as well as a thespian. Last spring, I had the opportunity to present to Abigail the Smith College Book Award, and that award goes to an outstanding junior who exemplifies academic achievement, leadership, and concern for her fellow cl classmates. And isn't that what we want for all of our students to be such wonderful contributing members of our society and uh, in exemplify the citizenship that makes society work for us. While attending LHS, you've received numerous uh, Academic Excellence Award, including awards in calculus, anatomy, uh, psychology, Spanish and English. You're an active member of the National Honor Society. And in addition to the, all of those rigorous courses, which I know is a lot of homework and a lot of work for you, you're a member of the LHS Student Council. You're, you've been in the chorus. You're a member of Pulse, which is the high school a cappella group. And you've been a member of the cast in our theater as well as musical theater productions throughout your high school career. And in fact, you received the K.D. Krieger Memorial Award for Best Actress when you were a more. Quite an accomplishment. You're currently Vice President of the LHS course. So you serve as a volunteer in the schools and in the community. You've assisted with Unified Track Program. You've participated in a Make-A-Wish Reveal Program. You work, too, in addition to all of this, she works part-time at Kimball Farms. <laughs> and after graduation, Abigail hopes to attend a four-year university in, in Boston to study sociology and mathematics and then attend law school. It's such a great privilege for me to be able to to recognize you and present you this award, uh, which is one that across our Commonwealth, every superintendent presents uh, to scholars, either at least one, and depending upon the size of the school and the district, uh, maybe some more. But uh, I wanted to highlight for folks also the quote uh, that you chose from Susie Casson, who's an American writer and poet and philosopher. And the quote uh, that Abigail selected was, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. And I think that really exemplifies the way that you've approached your work and, and your friendships and just what you've done while you've been at Ludenberg High. So I'm honored to recognize you. You're a very accomplished young woman and your future is very bright. So congratulations to you. Well, I'm just here with my both my parents, my mom and my dad, my little sister, and just wanted to kind of say thank you to Lunenburg because I entered the school district pretty late. Um, I was an eighth grader and was very, very timid. By the end of eighth grade, I had no friends. So it just kind of shows that the high school is such a welcoming and wonderful community that I was able to accomplish this with all the kids who have been here since kindergarten together, and I felt completely welcomed and just a very positive environment. So thank you. Well, congratulations again. And congratulations to all, all of you. I did want to do okay. one other acknowledgement for superintendent's report. Um, on Saturday, I was able to travel to Reading, and I was able to watch um, the Division I bands. I wasn't able to stay for the full band yeah. competition, and I wish I would have been able to, because it's quite remarkable what, what these young uh, people are doing. Um, in Division I, Denham, uh, Lunenburg, uh, Fitchburg, uh, Swansea, Belrica, and Dudley uh, were part of that 
that uh, particular competition. Um, the, the competitions are leveled based upon the number of participants in the band and the color guard as opposed to the size of the school because as I read through that list you know that Lunenburg is one of the smaller schools that I listed there. Uh, but um, our uh, students in the last two competitions have taken home uh, a second and a third place which is quite remarkable because um, you know if they've been working so very diligently over the years and particularly this year they've added another practice to their schedule. They're out there on Saturdays as well as late Thursday nights and they even their performance rating between the two performances gained five points. Um, Mrs. Wardwell who's the director uh, let me know about that. So I just wanted uh, to share the program from that if you'd like to, uh, to look through it um, and uh, just tell how very proud we are of the band and all that they've accomplished and um, this is the first year our band has actually placed in these competitions so I wanted to acknowledge that and also wanted to talk about how excited we are that they'll be performing prior to the special town meeting um, oh, here in a couple weeks so um, around they'll do two performances if it's if weather permits they'll be outside greeting people as they come in with that performance and they'll do one at 630 and another one uh, the performance is only about seven minutes long they won't be going through the formations but the music will be there but on the screens inside it's our intent to have the full uh, performance where they're going through their formations uh, to have that playing inside for people to be able to enjoy. So come out to town meeting definitely and uh, come out uh, a little early for town meeting so you can hear this wonderful band uh, perform. So, what is uh, the day of town meeting? Again? That Tuesday is I, November what? November 28th. 28th. 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. But 6.30 to hear the band. 6.30 to hear the band. Or 6:45, you could Some hear the band okay. too. Well, but you need, get early, get you, you need yeah, to get checked. You need to get you need to get checked in. They'll yeah. be performing in the gym. gym. Okay. Um, the town meeting is in the auditorium, but it's a short walk across the uh, corridor there to to get from one to the other. Uh, but there is that check-in procedure and everything. So oh, uh, do right. come out yeah. um, and and um, you know show your appreciation and enjoy this uh, wonderful talent that we have here uh, in our band members. So that's my superintendent's that's report. Good things happening. Yes. Okay, student rep is not here today, but I will fill you in on all the athletics going on. The um, field hockey just advanced to um, play Oakmont on Friday. Football is playing in districts on Friday, and soccer is playing on Friday. I don't know wow. if any of them are home or... or Soft, I know that field hockey just got there. Just, just got, got it, it okay. today. Just so got there. Field hockey is away at Oakmont. I'm not sure what football is, mm -hmm. but I know they're all I playing Friday. Yeah, I thought they were away, but they might all um, be away. Let's uh, check our website. Okay. It'll be up on the website, and okay. everybody will know. Okay. Or call the office. Yeah. Call the high school. Call the superintendent's yeah. office. We'll be a, okay. um, able to answer that. It's uh, evolving. They're just getting. I know scheduled. they're just getting. <laughs> yeah. They're all just getting placements. So. Um, old business, the second reading of the policy, the school calendar policy. Yes, I just wanted to do a quick overview uh, for every uh, the listeners. Um, basically, we've uh, worked with uh, various groups in the school community over the years, and most recently, uh, a nice working meeting, a workshop meeting uh, with representatives of our teachers association, and we're inserting some guidelines that have been developed over the time for all of those uh, groups. Guidelines that include um, a statement of what's required by regulation, meaning 180 days of school. And uh, we also uh, schedule five snow days within a regular ca calendar. And any snow days that you take must be made up by June 30th. So that's straight out of the um, regulations, and so that's articulated. If those regulations should change at any point in time, it would be important to, to change this particular policy. But they've that's been a pretty long-standing uh, kind of state re regulation. We also also added that a school week uh, needs to consist of a, a minimum of two and a half uh, instructional days. That's our goal when we're putting together a, a calendar. And we want to maintain as many five-day weeks as possible to ma maximize the continuity of instruction. And we're also, uh, some other details that are being added is that schools shall start the week before Labor Day and be comprised of a minimum of a three-day week for students, uh, usually Thursday or 
Tuesday through Thursday. And then we have a list of the days where there'll be no school, and those are the state and national holidays that are articulated. Uh, our Thanksgiving break will be a half day on Wednesday, and uh, Thanksgiving Day as well as the Friday following Thanksgiving Day. Um, so February break shall be the week of President's Day. April vacation will be the week of pra uh, Patriot's Day. And winter vacation shall encompass December 24th through January 1st. And the school committee may choose to take the 23rd of December as a no school day if the winter break results in a singular day school week. So professional development shall be scheduled in accordance with our agreements with the uh, Teachers Association. And those are basically the changes uh, that we've articulated into this policy. This is uh, the second reading uh, of that policy. There'll be three readings before um, any action is, uh, is taken to approve uh, either the policy in this revised form or some different revised form. Um, and in the superintendent's update yesterday, I let people know that we will receive public comment and I will bring that back to the school committee any that we receive until um, th uh, through the next meeting, which is November 16th. But we need that by noon in order to make sure that we can get that organized um, and any of that feedback um, provided to the school committee members. Uh, so you can take that into consideration as you continue uh, the process of revising this policy. Uh, so that's an overview of uh, what the revisions are to that particular uh, school policy. It's in the section 5000 school calendar, and the number of the policy is 5105.04. And that's at our website as well. The uh, revised policy is posted at our website for uh, so you can access it there for public comment. Okay. Or once again, uh, contact the superintendent's office mm -hmm. and we'll make sure that we send a hard copy off to, out to anybody that might need it in that form. Okay, so we do, you basically read it. Uh, well, I highlighted all the changes. So do we need to waive the reading? <laughs> um, you have that right to okay, waive so the reading. Okay, so we're going to waive the reading of the entire policy. Can I take a motion to waive the reading? I make a motion that we waive the second reading of policy 5105.04 of the school calendar. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So new business. We have a donation. We do. Uh, once again this year, the Connor B. Lorenz uh, a Memorial Fund has been extremely generous in supporting scholarships for students that are attending uh, trips within the Lunenburg Public School. Um, our tradition around uh, this donation has been to split it between the Nature's Classroom uh, trip and the Washington, D.C. trip. Those are our trips that uh, we uh, want as many of our fifth graders, Nature's Classroom, or eighth graders, Washington. Washington, D.C., uh, to be able to participate in. And uh, so these funds, uh, along with other gifts and donations that we receive, help support scholarships for students who, who may need that support in order to be able to participate. Um, so I recommend uh, to the committee that we um, acknowledge uh, this with gratitude and accept it um, and distribute it in that fa uh, fashion in terms of splitting it between uh, the gift funds at uh, Turkey Hill Elementary School and Lunenburg Middle School to be used for scholarships for those trips. Okay. Ooh, I'll take a motion for all of that. I move to accept the uh, donation of $2,500 from the Connor B. Lawrence Memorial Fund uh, with gratitude and uh, allocated as the superintendent suggests. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. A second public comment. Um, a quick yeah. announcement. The class of 2019 oh, yeah, is that. holding a, um, yeah. well, I have a, I have a 2019 student, so I wanted to get the word out for their class. Um, class fundraiser through the, with the, in partnership with the Epilepsy Foundation. So any clothes, linens, towels, shoes can be brought in between today and December 5th, there are bins at each school. They're right inside, most are right near the front office. And just put them in some sort of plastic bag, a trash bag, um, a, a grocery store bag, just so that they're not, they're easy to gather up and out. And um, proceeds will go to benefit the Epilepsy Foundation. Mm -hmm. So, 
It's a fundraiser for the epilepsy, not for the class of 2019. No, I'm sorry. It, the fundraiser obviously is benefits the Epilepsy Foundation. Okay. They partnered with them, okay. but there is there is profit for the class of the class 2019. of 2019. Yeah. Okay. Per pound, they get 20 cents per pound on okay. clothing, and there are also opportunities for books and other things. Um, there is a flyer that has gone that went home yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, the superintendent's update, um, and there it's also posted around town. The senior center. Um, uh, over at, over at the bank, other places locally, the the library, and so you can see exactly what speak. items, exactly what items are. Um, I saw it. Yeah. Okay. I just wondered how it take. was a fundraiser. That's all. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was very exciting, if I may, uh, when uh, this proposal. It's the first. Uh, you know, it was um, a nice community service project in addition to being a fundraiser yeah. for the group. And I do want to also acknowledge the town manager because I reached out to her because I said, you know, we're anticipating anticipating getting lots of things and the students are committed to uh, making sure that uh, every day they or every other day that they're picking those up but we needed some place to keep them and I asked about using uh, some space at TCP for this month-long effort and the town manager was uh, very um, you know responsive and and supportive of us being able to uh, not have somebody have to take that home to their garage or distribute it around different places or try to find another place in the schools to do it because we need to keep those front offices obviously we can't have things building up there and we're anticipating a great response from the community so I've started cleaning out my closet I know so um, and um, but we're really appreciative of having uh, that space at TCP fantastic. to be able to yeah. to support the class in terms of this effort because um, then they have to get it in and um, it's just a, a nice opportunity for all the way around for all the participants parties I think so mm -hmm. thanks for remembering to mention what that Mrs. Bertram and they December, December, December 5 5 December 5 so you have a month to clean out my closet and <laughs> out through Got it. stuff and I think books, right? Yeah. And there are books. Yeah. There are other items, but it's you can have like books and magazines, but not encyclopedias or something right, not, like that. Yeah. The fly, yeah, the definitely. flyer is out there. You've got to check that out. Um, but yes, definitely great. Okay. Uh, reports, Mr. Levesque. So for the Athletic Advisory one. Council, yeah. we met on uh, the twenty fifth. We had an informal um, get together shortly before the uh, catering, the, the cafeteria oh, staff right, had right, right. A, a little catering menu for the booster clubs so that they could see what is available mm -hmm. at the school for banquets. Yep. Um, and so that was part awesome. of our discussion. Uh, you know, they got to taste the food, they looked at the menu, the prices, and, and so uh, that was part of our discussion in terms of of um, consolidating. The efforts and kind of keeping things even across the uh, across the lines. Um, so they looked at that. We uh, we are still working on the spreadsheet for uh, updating. Each booster club is doing fundraisers, so they're putting the in the in the uh, spreadsheet so that people can understand where's the money going. Mm -hmm. Why are you asking me for money and what's it going for? Yeah. So that um, the big thing is that we want to be transparent in terms of the fundraising because there's been so much of it going on. Um, so that should be done by the time we have our next meeting. Uh, there was also some discussion about the uniforms. Um, some of them are in better shape than others. Um, you know, high, uh, the, you know, sliding into, into home base kind of puts a wear and tear on, on baseball uniforms versus running around and, and shooting baskets. Um, so there's going, we're gonna look at the uniforms and uh, ensure that we are getting consistent logoing because there's been different logos oh, in the as well Very so that's part of the topic of okay. discussion that's cool. um, yep. so on the fundraising that we have a small group of people that are talking about the, how we can make fundraising a little more uh, equitable and not um, so annoying to the parents mm -hmm. that, <laughs> that are getting hit by multiple people um, so they're they're looking at streamlining those and instead of doing it by sport by season and so maybe doing some seasonal right. fundraising mm. instead that of, way there's no overlap right right wow. okay um, there was also some discussion about uh, what we can do in the off season in terms of boost spending booster club money which we can't do um, 
we t we uh, were given some samples of new banners to put into the gym yep. to replace the old heavy felt ones. Um, we uh, liked what was provided. It was a, a cl blue cloth, kind of satiny finish with white lettering and white trim. Um, and so uh, Mr. McAuliffe is going to uh, get the pricing for that and let us know that at the next meeting as well. Um, and we did talk about student representation and what we would that. like to have okay. for students. Uh, we would like to have two boys and two girls. We would have like to have a mixture of seniors and juniors hmm. at this mm -hmm. point, and if possible, multi-sport or multi-season right. players. Um, what we are also going to do is invite current seniors that are playing sports to attend our next meeting and give us some input on what their experience has been in the in the sports program at the high school in terms of signing up, fees, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we can start getting some some information about what can make the the program better and enhance their experiences. Um, so speaking of our next meeting, that will be on Monday, November twenty seventh, at uh, the middle school workroom at 7 p.m. and uh, that's where we're at at this point. Any questions? I hope I heard some good feedback. That's great. Uh, I think it, it's enlightening we, we are for new, some people. Um, so, and we're getting our footing and, and it's, it's where we're coming together in, mm -hmm. in terms of what our mission is and I think um, uh, you know the first meeting was why are we here? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the second meeting was now we see some some value in doing this. Mm -hmm. So um, I think by the third meeting we'll we'll be able to get running and actually start making some right some progress towards some of the some of the issues that we we've seen. I, I think that it's enlightening for some of the people on the committee that had different views on different sports that they're not involved with. Right. And a lot of things that I heard. Um, feedback wise um, it's enlightening for me as well not right. having any I just any think that it's good it. to get people together that have a, one perspective and then they get clarity yes mm -hmm. communication yes is the key. yeah yes. so all right did anyone have a school council meeting I did. Since you did. Okay. Primary school did. Oh, gosh. Um, had a great school council meeting. Um, and it was actually attended by um, a senior as well who was there for um, com uh, community service learning um, class that they take. So, And they actually had a lot to offer. So it was really, it was nice. Um, but just um, looking at, spent a lot of time talking about it. The primary school, they're working on um, class charters. So really focusing on the social emo um, emotional, um, the mood meter, they've had many of their faculty go down to Yale University for their um, program, um, which has a huge social, social emotional focus, and just bringing that into the classroom. We really got into a long discussion around just that, that aspect of how, how you're feeling in the classroom. Mm -hmm. and, um, it made me think about something I want to bring up and as far as topics for future discussion. But I think the teachers, especially kindergarten and first grade teachers, were surprised at how articulate, you know, five, six, and seven-year-olds were about the environment they wanted to learn in. Mm -hmm. So that was, they were, they were pleasantly surprised. And they're already feeling effects in their room. When things are feeling off, you know, they're, they're bringing it back to, all right, we created this together. How do you think... You know, are we there? How are we feeling? So um, that was the, the um, big part of the meeting, and also conference scheduling and things like that, and some of the, some of the challenges in doing all of that. So um, that was good to hear, just some feedback about that. Next meeting is November 29. And I think at Facebook, they posted some of those charters. Um, they did. They did on the so if, if you're interested page. on they're, our Facebook they're pretty page, pretty amazing, yeah. really. Yeah, I think I can mm -hmm. see those. The vocabulary. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what because they come up with their own and words. The so first grade said, teacher yeah. said, "My student looked right at me and said, I want to be heard." There you go. Not what she was expecting, someone mm -hmm. that young to say. I'm sure they never feel heard. Hmm? I'm sure a lot of the them importance don't feel of heard. that yeah. that yes. voice. Yeah, yep. absolutely. 
Um, and we did meet at the at the middle school oh, you did? on the twenty okay. fourth, and okay. I unfortunately did not bring my notes, but I know we remember. I remember talking about the um, the district plan and how the school plan is going to tie into that, and uh, looking at the handbooks as part of our, mm-hmm. our plan. Oh, for the strategic of, plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, the and uh, unfortunately, I don't have my notes. I don't have all the That's specifics all right. of what we talked about. But That's all right. We did meet, okay. and, and uh, the team seems to be uh, fully engaged and, and very happy about, where, at least so far, where the school has landed um, so far this year. It's just that they're, everybody's and the, and, very oh, positive did, about oh, and, the direction um, at the moment. The new MCAS results came out, right? Mm-hmm. And they went they home did, today for we the... We did talk about those a little did, bit, yeah. Did you talk about those? Um, about, well, and the change. Right, mm-hmm. the, yeah. and reading them. And, and right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the instructions mm-hmm. went home. And student interpret. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I think okay. students were. My student came home with an idea of that, so she oh, expressed okay. that she knew that they were scored differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a new test. Yep, yeah, a new and assessment. And I think that was important for students to know because if they if they are in touch with what scores they've had in the past, knowing that this was not any yeah. sort of correlation one way or another of mm-hmm. correct yeah. of performance yeah. necessarily. So I think to restart. There, yes. Yeah. There was also some discussion about uh, doing a one-to-one with Chromebooks mm-hmm. starting at sixth grade, uh, potentially. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> and so there's there's some she, so to, uh, they're going to come up with some numbers on that. And, okay. Well, and it may not be take home. Chromebooks. They may mm-hmm. be at the school. Oh, a cart. Okay. We're talking yeah. cart then. Well, no, they've they've got a cart, but the cart is. If one of the teachers needs them and for multiple days, then other teachers can't have access to them. So, they're they're looking at potentially doing the one to one for increase. Well, no, increasing the 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 assigned Chromebooks. I'm just wondering how that will translate to the high school since ninth graders don't have a one to one. But the high that, well, that's part of the yeah. the plan. Yes. Okay. It's to do six through okay. nine okay. on a three year schedule and then ten. I'm through just 12. making sure we're covering that one yeah. grade yeah. that doesn't have that them doesn't in the high have school. it. Yeah. We don't want to forget them. And no. that's kind of a preview. Um, obviously, <laughs> the principals are are working with the school councils as they prepare uh, for responding to the strategic plan, as well as uh, for setting up uh, the discussions for the budget okay. um, yeah. that is coming up. Uh, but um, indeed, as uh, with all the online, uh, as our teachers uh, and students embrace and use the technology more, the demands um, for the carts, when we uh, did the project of uh, having um, a, a one cart per every two grade, uh, two classrooms at the middle school seemed pretty good, but f- folks are finding that they can't schedule it as, as often as they'd like to. Um, so um, we are putting together, Mr. Maladrinos will be with us on the 16th to present the budget. So you, you might see the first glimpse of different scenarios and how they might play out okay. financially. Because as per our discussion with the initial one-on-one initiative, the notion is not just how to do it, but how to sustain it. Sustain it. Right. Um, which is so yeah, critical. That's yeah. The most important piece. How do you afford it yeah. to begin with, and how do you sustain it? Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, so, okay. Those are okay. things yet to be revealed and, and uh, discussed, obviously. <gasps> Um, I don't think the PTO met. Did they meet after? No, their next meeting is November 13th, mm-hmm. the okay. middle school project room. Um, Barnes & Nobles is on the 16th, 16th. which okay. is the same day as ours. Yeah. The time is from 4 to 9. Oh, is it 4 to 9? So we could go before we yep. have our meeting. Yes, you can go okay. before, but if you couldn't make it, there will be an online code. They did not have that posted yet. I think that's kind of a, a day of. They start posting that code, and then it's good for, if it does the same as last time, good for a week after. So if you can't make that day, then... Right, okay. Do the online code. Mm-hmm. And what percentage do you get back? 10%. Okay. And that includes the cafe as well. Ah. My favorite part. <laughs> cheesecake. 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 Yeah, exactly. Don't ever think of cheesecake. <laughs> okay, topics for future discussions. Google Wendy, you said you had something? I did. Um, the last year, I've, just, I've been reflecting more 
on the last year in our district. We moved into, you know, we had buildings shifting, changing mm -hmm. new buildings, many new learning and curriculum initiatives, which we have seen over the past mm -hmm. year. And we're putting a lot of time and effort. I, I work with the wellness um, uh, subcommittee around focusing on student mental health, uh, you know, in addition to their, to their you know, um, academics. And I'm wondering if we don't take some time to talk with our educators, and whether it be via survey or something, to see how they're doing. They've experienced a ton of change, and mm -hmm. they have been, had a lot of additional um, um, tasks, data, um, changes put onto their plates. And everything trickles down. So what comes into our classrooms comes from them. So I don't know. I just thought about how could we possibly discuss a way to check in or just ensure that, you know, staff have what they need right? and they feel supported, whether it's building-wide initiatives, you know, asking principals to do something. I'd love to hear some sort of check-in. Sure. Um, and just back to the emotional intelligence, all of those uh, uh, initiatives at the primary and the elementary school have started with the teachers to provide, uh, the, uh, well, the faculty and staff, not just the teachers, but the faculty and staff, an understanding of, of uh, what those techniques and strategies are about to manage stress and bring our best selves to the work every day. So that was one component that we can explore some more. Um, I'll ask uh, our new HR director, Mr. Cassidy, to also uh, uh, let uh, provide an update of the kinds of things that are uh, exist, to. that we offer, uh, that the school committee and general public, hopefully our staff know about them in terms of those supports being out there, but we can do a, a, an overview and even look at uh, a different kind of uh, staff survey, because I know that um, uh, as the mood meters have rolled out for our staff, uh, we see what uh, they are. We have one in our office, and, and we pay attention when p uh, people are in that red zone or um, a zone where uh, they're feeling distressed or they're feeling upset. Um, and um, how can we support everybody to, once again, not trying to be c cliche, but taking those um, uh, meta moments um, and using the ruler techniques and moving ourselves to a, a position where uh, we uh, are there with our best selves to do the work to support students. Because as you said, it does trickle down. So if I'm having one of those days where I'm not in the best emotional zone, that's going to impact everyone around me. Um, and so that um, is really the key to the whole emotional intelligence work that's going on, that it's not just for the students, it's for families and for our adults in the schools as well. And I piggybacking on that, my curiosity and interest is what can we do to support and are there common themes in what could potentially be causing that? Because somebody can just come in, we all have a, a, mm -hmm. a day, yeah, and sometimes it's related to sure. nothing in our in our right. work life right. and sometimes it is so I, I'm thinking listening to different faculty members speak mm -hmm. about what they need to manage in a day outside of their students just you know it is big and it's mm -hmm. changing and and it definitely is growing so just ensuring that if we're seeing any common themes what we can do as a mm -hmm. district to to support you bet Anybody else? Great. Um, I just wanted to back up to school building committee. Oh, sorry. We skip that. Well, uh, there is a meeting schedule. There is. Or, well, they're, they're working on scheduling a meeting for November 8th. Really? To, to close the out. The final meal. Is that a wrap-up meeting? Close out. That should is. should be the close out. Wow. wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot. Okay. Well, for so long, there was no, there was yeah, no update. Yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And We've been trying to get that nailed down, going through with the MSBA and uh, doing all the cross-validations with the pro-pay system, just all the numerous things that need to be done in order to get to that final meeting. But uh, uh, they uh, seem to have it in their their view now, if, if not next week, um, hopefully December. But... <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was going it, it to be, be October. Week, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. um, and we do have dates for um, policy subcommittee meetings. What are they again? Do we? Just so the that we can tell it I to thought? the public, the right? Yeah. 
um, and November. we will post those yes it will be posted policy subcommittee on the 9th at seven o'clock in the Lunenburg middle high school large conference room mm -hmm. and I think the 27th yes. of November also in the same location at seven o'clock so they are open to the public for comments just to sit and listen to right. what we're talking about in our policy discussions and um, if you have any comments there will be a public comment sec time Correct. And and the agendas for those will be posted just as the agenda uh, for uh, this meeting, any public meeting, is posted at least 48 hours in advance. And those are posted um, just like the school committee uh, regular meetings and, and special meetings are posted. Uh, so people can access that online or, or call our office or call the clerk's office to find that. I also wanted to follow up. I know Ms. Um, Ailes had uh, asked about follow-up with our new positions and mm -hmm. different things we we did and I did uh, request of the administrators to make sure when they're bringing the current year's budget forward that they're reporting on those kinds of things that we made changes with or added to added positions um, okay. lowered class size that they report upon those uh, in detail as they come to you uh, with next year's budget okay, proposal Thank you. is that acceptable no to that's approach? fantastic okay. I think it's good to reflect on whether it was effective mm -hmm. or not and what we could do moving forward so yeah. And I, I felt rather than uh, funnel those reports through me or just have it in writing uh, to They'll be, be able to have them present it um, okay. as they presented that budget uh, made a uh, yeah, seemed absolutely. to make sense. Thank you. Um, that meeting on the the twenty seventh. Yeah. Conflicts with the oh, town. Um, athletic advisory. Athletic advisory. And I've got this on the schedule with Principal um, Spadafino. What, the location? The wrong location is in the same room as oh. well. In the conference room? Oh, not in the conference room, sorry. Yeah, we're in we're the large conference room. Large room. The, You're in the, the, the project. You're in we're the in the project room, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can yeah. stay high and then walk by. But they will have to, to choose okay, you'll which have meeting to Yeah, if you want to come to our policy <laughs> meeting, you'll have to pick. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it could be hot topics exciting. at both. <laughs> so, okay. That's good to know, though. Thank you, Jim. Um, so, um, Thanks for everyone to coming. Now we're going to go into executive session. Um, yes. Okay. So we're going to adjourn to executive session, um, according to MGL C section C thirty A section twenty one A C to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, and we're not coming back to public. No meeting. So thank you for coming. Congratulations, Abigail. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Adjourn.